To mitigate the threat of climate change, governments have committed to greenhouse gas emission reduction targets. To reach these, we need to reduce energy consumption and move fast to a decarbonized, decentralized, and digitalized energy system of the future. Grids represent the backbone for this transition as they connect renewable energy sources far away from the load centers, enable electrification, balance generation and customer demand, minimize risks and impacts of outages, facilitate the joint and thus economic use of resources, allow liberal electricity trading, and have mature and available components. To transport electricity from remote renewable generation units to the consumers and ensure continuous supply, we need a well-developed and reliable power grid infrastructure. Existing transmission lines that carry renewable electricity inland can be overloaded during strong wind phases and consequently, wind turbines must sometimes be shut down temporarily. To prevent this, the grid must be strengthened and expanded. To fully decarbonize our societies, we need to electrify sectors which today are mainly powered by fossil energy sources, such as transportation and heating and cooling of buildings. This in turn leads to an increasing demand for decarbonized electricity that requires additional grids to connect these newly electrified sectors. With increasing shares of renewable energy sources in the grid being integrated, namely wind and solar, which are variable, we need the grid to expand, to be reinforced and to become smart. This will allow a perfect balance between generation and demand. A smart grid that incorporates data, customer flexibility and communication technology allows consumers to become prosumers and to actively participate in the electricity market, thus relieving the grid by balancing local generation and demand. A balance between regions with high input of renewables like solar and wind and regions with higher demand can also be achieved over long distances. This requires a Europe-wide meshed grid and the expansion of transmission capacities between countries in the form of so-called interconnectors. Electricity grids are essential to integrate renewable energy sources that are dispersed across Europe. This implies that collaboration across countries is fundamental and we can achieve this collaboration through the build-up of interconnectors. Usually these projects are financed by the project of common interest and if we are successful in building up the grid in this way then we name it a renewables grid. So if we develop the network uh, to integrate more renewables of course the network will also be more robust in case of outages so, of course, we are always prepared for any outage of any network element. But of course, if this outage happens, we also have to be prepared for the next outage. And in this case, for example, redistribution of flows can really help uh, to solve some congestions on the network. And here, for example, renewables can help uh, because they are well distributed over the whole uh, system. Another advantage of a pan-European grid is that it enables the sharing of resources, assets and investment costs. This increases European welfare as high transmission capacities allow for optimal siting and efficient use of generation plants. Consumers also benefit directly from the grid. High transmission capacities enable free trade and economic electricity production. Energy can be generated where it is cheapest and transported to the places with the highest demand. Luckily for us, the renewable resources and technology we need to generate and transport renewable electricity 
are already available, and we do not depend on new technology development to create the decarbonised energy system of the future. Massive deployment of grid, it's actually a key point in the fight against climate change. Grids are fundamental, but the large deployment of them have risks for ecosystems and biodiversity. So when we think about these projects, when we think about deployment of grids on a large scale, we need to also think about preventing uh, those negative impacts on biodiversity and ecosystems and all the people that depend on them. To succeed, we must collaborate across sectors while working closely with conservation organisations and involving local communities. All stakeholders acting together with transparency and urgency as an ecosystem of actors can create a sustainable energy system in Europe that serves future generations.